The American Revolution had been raging for half a decade in the autumn of 1781, and the British Army was on the back foot. Just outside of British-occupied New York was a combined French and American army led by George Washington, a renowned and brilliant military strategist, soon to be titled the Father of a Nation. By his side stood the French general Marquis de Lafayette on a mission from the French kingdom that wanted to see anything done at the expense of the British. After thorough planning, the two generals decided to use fake dispatches to trick the British at New York to think that they were about to attack. But instead, they marched south towards Yorktown where there was a smaller British force under General Lord Cornwallis, who was in no position to take on the might of the Allied army. The French fleet blockaded the town from supplies and successfully fought off a Royal Navy relief force at the Battle of Chesapeake Bay. Wallace's army was now constricted by Washington and Lafayette. It was time to close in for the kill. The day was hot, the stakes were high. Cornwallis's army was in a desperate situation, and desperately they were willing to hold out. Around the village of Yorktown was a tight ring of trenches and fortifications surrounded by a much more crucial layer of redoubts that bristled with cannon. To the west were earthworks occupied by British Royal Fusiliers. To the south was a long collection of forward redoubts, and on the British left were a pair of redoubts blocking Yorktown's eastern entrance, named redoubts number 9 and 10. Washington's plan was simple use artillery to bombard the British forces into submission. But in order to do so effectively, he would need to find a way to close the gap between his guns and Yorktown. On September 29, he ordered his troops to advance to the Southern Redoubt. Cannon fire was exchanged, and shots were fired between American riflemen and Hessian Jaegers under Cornwallis. Washington's men occupied the redoubts with light casualties. As the American and French guns moved up, new and improved fortifications were built to accommodate them. The next day, the French attacked the British fusiliers. And were repulsed after two hours of fighting. On October 3rd, British Light Cavalry tried to sneak out to forage for supplies, but were caught by French troops and forced back to the safety of their defenses. Under the cover of night on October 6th, Washington ordered French and American troops to construct a new line of fortifications closer to the eastern entrance of Yorktown. This line became known as the First Parallel, as more guns were moved up, it was clear that the gap between Washington's artillery and Yorktown was closing, but the British army was still not submitting. Artillery fire between both sides was exchanged, and as the night fell again, the Allied troops moved forward to build a second parallel of fortifications to put the American guns even closer to the British. The parallel was so close it was almost within musket range of redoubt number 9. Two British redoubts were obstructing the finishing of the second parallel. It became clear that if Washington was to progress in his plan, the redoubts would have to be taken by storm. On October 14, bayonets were fixed, and American light infantry was ordered to charge. Shots were fired, hand grenades were thrown, and after being outflanked and overwhelmed, Redoubt Number 10 was taken by the Americans. At the same time, French troops rushed out to attack Redoubt Number 9. They fired volleys and hacked through the wooden abatis before pushing the British out 
at Bayonet Point. The American guns now moved even closer to the town, tearing apart its defenses. The British needed to do something quick. That night, British infantry raided the American positions in an attempt to sabotage their cannons. They made it far as the American troops were asleep, but French infantry intervened and drove the British back. The cannon fire intensified and the situation looked hopeless for the British. So they surrendered on the 17th.